Hello everyone. Uh, thanks a lot for joining this webinar. My name is Varun Daga and I work as a senior consultant uh, in analytics at Dunn Solutions Group. Uh, today we will be looking into operationalizing predictive models in Azure ML uh, by deploying a recommendation engine to enhance automation. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and look at today's agenda. I'm just gonna So I'll start off with an overview of Dunn Solutions Group and our mission statement. I'll move on to Azure Machine Learning Operations and its three main components, deployment, monitoring and maintenance, and scaling. Finally, I have a really fun and knowledgeable demo on operationalizing predictive models in Azure ML. So I can't wait and let's get started. Dunn Solutions is a digital commerce and business transformation consultancy. We specialize in delivering velocity to our clients. Velocity comprises of two components, speed and direction. We bring speed by business process automation and direction through analytics. After all, if you're planning to go fast, go fast in the right direction. Dunn Solution has have, have, have had a long history of delivering business innovation and technology solutions to our clients. We're headquartered just outside of Chicago and Skokie, and we, we also have offices in Minneapolis and Bangalore, India. So earlier we discussed about providing velocity to our clients, and we do that by something we call as the velocity virtue cycle. Uh, it basically is a feedback loop that entails traditional and advanced analytic solutions to provide direction and automating the analytical solution to provide speed. So the idea is to support an organization's digital transformation journey. A lot of what we see in this webinar will be related to process automation that I talked about earlier. So let's begin with the ML operations. ML operations is like DevOps, which people are more familiar with. It's just something in the data science ecosystem. Primarily, ML ops can deliver ML pipelines with high efficiency if strategized properly. Some of the key benefits includes, includes fast model development, which provides you with an opportunity to experiment more because you're not wasting time deploying, uh, deploying and training models. You can just pay attention to how you wanna, uh, how you wanna construct your model and then model development can happen with Azure. Secondly, deploying models in production with simple API calls, and we can do that by a click of a button and uh, have a new web service which you can call. And most importantly, assuring that model does not degrade over time by monitoring it and retraining it if required to maintain high quality. Now, with that being said, let's start with some key concepts within the deploy, monitor, and retraining phase that we see right here. This is our uh, machine learning pipeline and we're focusing on the operational part of it. Oh, we'll start with preparing for model deployment. It is really essential and it requires some careful consideration. I've laid out a few of them here. Let's start with flexibility. Deployment in Azure uh, happens with the click of a button from where, from where you can retrain and consume models without any interruptions. Now this is important because uh, after you deploy the model, you wouldn't want your application to break off. And we'll talk about this more. Uh, uh. Next comes uh, validity. Azure workflow validates the entire process before deploying the model. So this is basically preventing us from deploying faulty models. And we wouldn't want to do that uh, because it's better to have an old model ra rather than something that's not working and breaking off. Third one is security. The consumption of this model happens over, uh, securely over a, a web service endpoint, and you can uh, also use other Azure functionalities to make it even more secure. Finally, the model output. Azure ML Studio offers transformations to structure the data as your application wants to consume it. So just to reiterate, it's vital to consider all these variable while you're strategizing your deployments. Let's go ahead and look at how easy it is to deploy models in Azure ML. In just three steps, you can do it. 
train multiple models if you like and choose the best one convert the training experiment to a predictive experiment and again we're going to see this in our demo <clears throat> then finally you deploy the predictive experiment as a web service it gets a little tricky uh, when you're retraining the web service and patching it back to the predict predictive experiment but we're going to see all of that in our demo uh, now here is a dashboard uh, that we'll see in the demo it provides information related to consuming and testing the web service you have request response and batch execution but they also have this new uh, web service experience that we're going to look at which gives a very uh, a much better ui interface to uh, configure and maintain your web services so let's move on to monitoring the deployed model two primary aspects of monitoring are serving and performance firstly you have to make sure that your application consumes the model without any errors azure provides a dashboard with request metrics and statistics of how the model is being consumed so here we can see that our is, we had some requests and then they, those requests were completed in 524 milliseconds so this is a nice dashboard that's uh, giving you an idea of how your model is serving and how frequently an application or multiple applications uh, access it. Secondly, performance of the model at the application side. For example, a recommendation engine implemented for an e-commerce website can have click-through rate as a primary indicator for model performance. In the sense that basically, if you have a click-through rate that's going up after implementing your recommendation engine, you do that's, uh, that the model is doing well. And if it's going down over time, you know that you have new data and you might want to retrain at this point. After setting a monitoring, it's very important to maintain the deployed model. Now, there are a few questions, a few very important questions that I, want, want, I would want you to ask as you're strategizing and dealing with model degradations. How often is your input data changing? It's very important because you have to know if it's uh, so frequent that you have to probably train the model every day or it's weekly or even monthly. Is it possible to define a fixed window of time to retrain the model? Now this time can be, uh, for example, a weekly, we can retrain the model every week and we'll be good to go. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, defining metrics to get a sense of model performance. And this is very important because on the application side, we have to know how the model is doing and if the accuracy that we predict is, is even worth it or not. Uh, then we go on to uh, the process that will update the model and if we have that in place or not. Lastly, uh, the interruption will the model update interrupt the consumption from the application side because we don't want that we don't want application to break off like i mentioned earlier we want a seamless experience uh, of consuming our predictive uh, web service all these questions are really important and will serve as a starting point as you create a plan for monitoring now let's see uh, how you can retrain a web service in azure and it's really easy i mean you basically deploy a retraining web service and we're going to see all of this in our demo uh, with that retraining web service you'll train a new model uh, using some api calls and then you will update your existing experiment the predictive experiment that you have with this new retrained web service so it's it's pretty simple and we'll see how we do that in our demo lastly uh, we'll talk about model scalability. Azure provides these services to perform very well at scale. Uh, there are two different tiers, basic and standard. Basic is uh, basically, it's, it's basically for you to get started and, have, and it has certain limitation in terms of storage and compute. Uh, so uh, if you're using basic, it's basically to uh, explore the Azure platform, the ML Studio and what all you can do with it. Standard is what you'll use uh, when uh, you're deploying models in production with high data volume and probably frequent retraining of models and consumption of the predictive experiment. So with that being said, we covered our uh, three main concepts of operationalizing machine learning models. Uh, let's get to the fun demo that I promised.
uh, I did a webinar that you can check out on our YouTube channel, which talked about implementing recommendation engines and all the nitty gritty around that. Now in this demo, I'm not going to spend too much time on explaining the model itself, but I will take a deep dive into how operationalizing works when you're uh, op operationalizing works when uh, you're deploying the entire ML, ML pop pipeline. Uh, <clears throat> so I'll be deploying and retraining a recommendation engine in ML Studio. That's our scenario right there. The objective is to deploy the model, navigate the web service dashboard, retrain the model, and then update the predictive experiment. So there are four things that we have to achieve in this demo. So without further ado, let's uh, get to it. <clears throat> I'm gonna switch my window uh, to go to this Microsoft Azure portal. So here is uh, the Microsoft Azure portal. This is the first screen that you'll see when you go on to portal.azure.com. Uh, here's the machine learning studio that we want to work with. I already have it open. So I'm just going to go there So this is what the ML machine learning studio uh, looks like There is a training experiment that you create to train a model uh, I, I don't want to go into too much details, but I do want to give you an overview of what's happening here so I'm gonna uh, squeeze this and just zoom it a little bit. So what's happening here is we have rating of restaurants uh, data. Uh, we, we have like we're training this model for the first time. So this is coming in as CSV. In this part, we're doing some data manipulation. We're changing the data types. We're removing the duplicates. So to enhance the data quality, then we split our data to training and testing and use this train matchbox recommend uh, recommender it's a bayesian recommender uh, which is basically an in-house package within azure ml from here we'll uh, score and evaluate our recommender now i there's something important here that i want you to uh, note we'll go into this metric the evaluate recommender and see that our uh, that the accuracy that we're getting is 72.02 percent and that's not bad but it's not great either i think we can do better uh, later when we retrain the model and we have better data so going ahead uh, after this we set up the web service now there are two different kinds of web service one is the update predictive experiment here and the other one is deploy web service uh, for the training model now if the, I was constructing this for the first time it wouldn't will, it will not give you the update predictive experiment it'll, but it'll show you like create a new experiment uh, predictive experiment but since I already have it there uh, I'll just uh, go into that now this uh, probably seems similar to what we saw in the training experiment there are a few differences now we're using this web service input into our score matchbox recommender and then we're using the train data that we train in the training experiment as the input to this so basically what we're seeing is when we call this web service we're going to send in a user id and which will return us the uh, the restaurants that we can recommend to those users do using this web service output so what i'm going to do is i'm going to deploy this web service it just says that I'm overwriting the web service and uh, I would want to do that. That's fine. So this might take a few seconds and this is the dashboard that we saw in, in the presentation. There are a few ways that you can test it. You have request response and batch execution, but I like this new preview feature that they have uh, added. Let's go to this new web service experience. Now this is uh, this is a place where you can manage your web services uh, for both training and predictive experiment. So let's so let's look at let's look at a few let's look at a few uh, different functionalities here. which will give us total response and requests 
uh, that has happened for this predictive experiment. Now we can see that to, in total we've had five different uh, uh, request and response requests, and which took an, on average 422.2 milliseconds, which is good. This is just showing the entire dashboard to us, and this is the part of the model serving that we talked about. Uh, the next important one is the consume uh, window. So here we have different ways we can consume this uh, uh, this predictive experiment, and they also provide us with the code uh, of the request response and batch. We have different programming languages that we can use here. And finally, what I want to do is I want to go to this test and I want to test the user ID. And this is important because we're going to see later when we retrain this web service that uh, we'll get better results. So when we test this, we're getting these three restaurants that we want to uh, recommend to the to this user. And we're rec uh, recommending this with 71% uh, accuracy that we saw earlier. From here, I would want to go back to my uh, experiments. So let's go to the training experiment. Here, one thing you might have noted is I, I do have these web service inputs and outputs. So what this web service input is doing is it's basically gonna help us retrain the web service. We're gonna put in a new CSV uh, in the edit metadata, which is basically getting the CSV file originally. And then we have two web service outputs right here, where the one, uh, the first one is giving us the uh, evaluation score of the recommender, and the second one is giving us the trained model. So basically, we're going to use this trained model to patch it back to our predictive experiment. So uh, let's set up this web service. So we're going to deploy the web service. Again, it's asking me that uh, it's telling me that I'm going to overwrite the service, and that's fine. Now go, let's go to this new web service experience again. Might take a few seconds to load. Here in the consume section it gives us different ways we can consume this web service. In this, in this case, we are just basically using this web service to train the model. So in the batch right here, I've consumed this model and retrained it uh, right before this uh, presentation. So what, what this code basically does is it'll take a file from a local system, it'll upload it to Azure Blob Storage, which is basically a storage area in uh, Azure ML. From there, what it's going to do is it's going to take the training web service, retrain the model on that CSV file, and then put the model back into the Azure Blob Storage with the accuracy. And uh, you know what, I'm, I'm going to show this to you. I'm going to go back here to the Azure portal. We have the blob storage right here. Let's go to our containers. We have the retrain models right here. And if you can see, we have three files right here. One is the rating of restaurants incremental. So this is the incremental data that I'm going to use uh, in addition to our initial data that's coming in for training the model. The score right here is uh, the new score that the retrained model generated and this I learner package is the model itself, which we're going to use to patch it back to the predictive experiment. But before doing that, uh, let's see what score we got for the retrained model. So we can see that we got 85.85%, which is more than the 71%, which we saw initially. So the model did uh, improve itself after adding more data. Uh, from here, what we're going to do is we're going to patch this new model that we created to our predictive experiment. So let's go back. So here is our recommendation system predictive experiment. We're going to go to the web service experience again. Now, an important thing to note here is um, that when, when in the consume, this is the default predictive experiment web service. And Azure doesn't allow you to patch it back to the default. So uh, a good practice is to create a new endpoint for that predictive experiment and then patch it to that. And then your application can con consume that in the future. You can just patch more models to uh, that so that it works uh, seamlessly. 
<clears throat> altogether. So if we, I just clicked on the web service and I uh, came to all the endpoints that we have. I've already created a new endpoint right here. It's called the V1 retrain model. We train that model using, uh, we train, uh, we, uh, we basically created this new endpoint and patch the model that we just created uh, in the Azure Blob Storage. Now I'm going to go to the test window here and I'm going to enter the same user ID. And we see if we go back to uh, our old one, the default one, we see that the, these results, they changed. And this these results, I can say, are accurate with an 81% uh, chance. So I'll be much more comfortable uh, showing this to my customers than the old one. And that tells you how important it is to retrain your model over time, uh, because otherwise the model is going to degrade and it's not going to be worth it. Uh, to present that data uh, to your customer. So with that, we covered uh, model retraining and patching it back to predictive uh, experiment. Uh, in addition to that, uh, I didn't talk specifically about it or uh, performed it, but we do get the evaluation score from the endpoint that we created in our training experiment. So you can use that to monitor uh, monitor the model uh, over time and see whether it's improving or not with uh, the additional data that's coming in. If it's not, there's no point retraining the model. Uh, uh, but if it is, uh, then you can go ahead and uh, retrain that and use that model in your new predictive experiment. So let's go back to our presentation. So our objective was to deploy the trained model, navigate the web service dashboard, uh, retrain it, update the experiment, and we did all four of those. And we saw how easy it is to do it in Azure ML Studio. Uh, let's move forward. In summary, Azure ML Studio meets all the criteria for a successful deployment. We saw we deployed it, we monitored it with the accuracy and retraining. Uh, we monitored it with uh, with the dashboard, and then we uh, retrained the retrained the model for the maintenance. Azure also supports writing code in Python, R, and C sharp. Uh, to consume those web services so the the consuming that we saw in our demo it was was the code that i wrote in python and implemented that uh, there's something new in azure ml there's a new version called azure machine learning designer which is in preview right now but has uh, really enhanced functionality in terms of deployment monitoring and scaling it also provides you a coding environment which uh, machine learning engineers can use and uh, leverage for creating custom models and stuff like that. I do have a call to action. Please reach out to us uh, to discuss how machine learning automation can make your organization more efficient. Work with us to define an ML project for you. And then finally, we'll help you deploy, the, uh, deploy and implement your uh, solution in Azure ML. Lastly, I hope you enjoyed this webinar and got an get to take some knowledge about Azure ML Studio. If you do have any questions and answers, please, please uh, do reach out to us. Thanks a lot.